still this one here. It's a pity you made it out of the sand pit alive. Sunday is just beyond this door. From my limited understanding, he's not someone easily handled. Are you prepared? Yeah. Only I believe he's the one who should be prepared to face me. <laughs> Tell me about your plan. I don't have a plan. I'll just play it by ear. There are only two kinds of bargaining chips when dealing with people. Benefit... ...or fear. <laughs> Looks like sincerity isn't in your dictionary. Am I not sincere enough? <laughs> There's no need to emphasize it. We've got to make good use of death. That man's sister is dead. He won't be able to turn a blind eye, and that's fear. And I'll help him find the murderer. He can't do it due to his status and position, but I can. And that's benefit. Fear and benefits. On what basis do you believe he's incapable, necessitating the delegation to someone from a rival faction, the IPC? Hmm. Simple. Because that murderer could very well be a traitor hiding inside the family. Uh, um, do you mean the Galaxy Ranger whom you accused? <laughs> that was just an excuse, good doctor. There's something wrong with that woman, and we need someone who can keep her in check. It's better to minimize the variables outside our control while we execute our plans. Moreover, I need to know her identity. If I'm lucky. <laughs> she could be an important pawn. And it's good to have more helpful friends when dealing with this matter. But honestly, the murder case is likely unrelated to her. I believe my standpoint. There's a rat in the family. Otherwise, why would Mr. Sunday arrange a private meeting with us? This isn't an interrogation, but a secret negotiation. We'll see. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll win back my freedom and power. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. If the chance of winning is just beyond this door, even if that chance is close to zero, well... <laughs> You can't win if you don't play, right? <laughs> ah, the charming audacity. To think that you, of all people, might emerge victorious, dear gambler. Three chips are enough. All or nothing. All right. My puzzles are too effortless for you, IPC Ambassador. I appreciate your words. And I see you put a lot of effort into welcoming me, Mr. Sunday. However, this is no way to greet a guest. Well, this isn't an invitation, but a summoning. Before we speak, I need to test your character. I imagine this knowledgeable doctor friend of yours has been of great help, yes? Certainly. You ought to know this better than I do. He has already faithfully fulfilled his duties, hasn't he? Yes. The doctor has assured me of your noble character. He considers you, like himself, a virtuous person who can be trusted by the family. I have come to know you very well as a person, Mr. Aventurine. You're diligent, generous, 
and willing to cooperate. The fact that you succeeded in overcoming many obstacles just to meet me gave me the reason to believe in your wisdom and courage. But there's one thing I must ask you. That is, you've used your wisdom at the wrong place to meet the wrong person and put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be, witnessing a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. You don't look too well. Am I making you anxious? If not, then it means I'm on your side. If I wasn't mistaken, you'd just made a serious accusation against the family. Well, you weren't mistaken, for depravity is creeping in around you. Well, there's no need for us to be evasive. Let's talk about your sister. Your sister's talent is unrivaled in the world of show business. As you know, her voice has been out of tune since she returned to Penacony. What's more disheartening, she can't sing anymore. Who could be responsible for this? Many suspect the culprit is among the outsiders, but I know... You hold a different opinion. Uh -huh. Okay. Now your noble status has become a shackle, preventing you from apprehending the murderer and avenging your sister's death. You're feeling anxious because you're out on a limb. But don't worry. I'm on your side. I'm immensely honored by your concern for me, Mr. Aventurine, since you're so selfless and generous. I believe you wouldn't ask for anything in return, would you? Well, naturally, you wouldn't incur any loss from this. I just want to reclaim what is mine. My liberty and the personal items under the family's custody, the bag of gift money, and... The box in which the cornerstone is stored. That's right. Cornerstone. I've heard it's a treasured asset of the strategic investment department. A sacred stone that seals the preservation emanator, granting significant power. And every liquidation specialist holds one. For an object so precious, it probably comes at an even higher price than other forms of recompense. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the high level of risk I'll be undertaking to bring the truth to light. Mr. Aventurine, when you are out and about, do you always make adjustments to your appearance? Your tie should be on the center line. Your shirt must not protrude from your vest. Your trouser creases should be perfectly straight and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. Of course. But I don't, because it's not appropriate to do so in public. You should make sure everything is presentable and in order before leaving the house. I'm not the kind that takes risks. The cornerstone must be in the custody of the family. No room for negotiation. Please, don't let me turn you down twice. Sure. The gift money is good enough. I suppose you wouldn't mind that. After all, a merchant can't function without a bargaining chip. You compromised quicker than I thought. Unfortunately, it's a gambler that needs a bargaining chip, not a merchant. I can give you your gift money, but before that, I want you to tell me. The fact that you can decisively forsake the box you asked for, what exactly is stored in it? Oh, triple-faced soul. Please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. <sighs> what have you done? Under the light of the harmony, all wickedness is revealed. I implore them to shed their light, and I'll ask you questions on their behalf. Next. You have 113 seconds to prove your innocence and gain my trust. 
And if I refuse to answer? You can try. And we'll see if the Harmony rejects you. <laughs> Question. Do you own a cornerstone? Yes. What a simple answer. You, too, understand that idle chatter leads only to poverty. Did you hand over the cornerstone to the family when you entered Panacone? Yes. Does the cornerstone you handed over to the family belong to you? Yes. Is your cornerstone in this room right now? Yes. Is your memory free from any kind of tampering or deletion, encompassing but not restricted to the techniques of the Garden of Recollection? Yes. Are you an Avgen from Sigonia? Yes. You even know about that? Do the Avgens have any ability to read, tamper with, or manipulate one's own or another's mind? No. Does it matter? Do you love your family more than yourself? Yes. All the Avgens were killed in a massacre. Am I right? No. Are you your clan's sole survivor? <sighs> Perhaps. Do you hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands? <sighs> I don't know. Wow. Interesting. Now, the final question. Can you swear that at this very moment, the Aventurine Stone is safe and sound in this box? get an answer open it mr. aventurine it's your last chance to defend your honor these since you came as promised learned doctor does this mean that you are willing to take the side of the family in this farce <laughs> 